After over six months with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I figured out Apple's master plan for dominating this smartphone market, especially after looking at leaks for the upcoming iPhone 16 series, which is now less than half a year away. The plan essentially consists of focusing on three things when it comes to the iPhone. Number one is to make the Apple ecosystem compelling by making their products work better and better with each other in an attempt to keep people locked in. Number two is to bring on new software features that you can't find anywhere else, making the iPhone the only option to get those features. And number three is to essentially keep making the iPhone just a little bit better every year, rotating between upgrading to a different set of features every year, like the design, connectivity, display, battery life, and cameras. But every few years, there's always an update that stands out. The big question is whether it's the iPhone 15 Pro Max or the upcoming 16. So in this review, I'm gonna answer that question by examining which parts of this phone really stood out after six months of use and whether those features were big enough to match up to previous legendary features like the OLED display on the iPhone 10, the massive battery life improvement on the 11 Pro Max, MagSafe on the 12, or 120Hz ProMotion on the 13 Pro. And I'm also gonna look at the leaks for the iPhone 16 lineup to see if we can detect any new legendary features we might wanna wait for. After six months, I've realized that the switch to USB-C is 100% a legendary feature, and I know all the Android guys are laughing right now because they've had it for years, but from an iPhone perspective, it's a really big deal to no longer be locked down by Apple's old lightning port. It's not just the convenience of being able to use a single cable for various devices, including iPad, MacBooks, Androids, but it instantly opens up the freedom to connect dozens of devices at any moment, including connecting it to a projector, TV, display, or something like SD cards or CF Express cards using these little adapters, or of course, there are USB-C hubs. But by far, the most useful thing we've discovered is for transferring video files in an instant using a portable SSD, which we've been doing for the last couple of work trips we've went on, like when we went to CES and filmed over a hundred clips across all three of our iPhone 15 Pro Maxes, allowing us to quickly transfer clips to the SSD and then to our MacBooks for editing. I'm not even kidding, this brand new workflow saved our butts during CES since we were filming and editing the whole time, seeing as we jam-packed our schedule way too full, and honestly, having USB-C on the iPhone 15 Pro Max made it actually viable compared to Lightning on previous iPhones, which was so slow and such a pain that I preferred to just use AirDrop, which also took forever. So it's been a really big deal, especially since you can use your iPhone to charge USB-C accessories, like let's say a set of AirPods, or even an Apple Watch if you have a little charging accessory like this one. So in terms of legendary upgrades, USB-C takes the first spot this time around. And other than that, there are two more legend-worthy updates on this phone, but honestly, I think only one of them will take the crown. But first, I wanna show you guys two of the best MagSafe cases you can buy right now from our sponsor, Taurus, the original stand case maker, who have finally perfected it with two different 360-degree stand case options, the O-Stand Spin and the O-Stand Rotatable. Both of them support MagSafe with a magnetic ring that's perfectly flush with the back of the case so you can still use it with all of your MagSafe accessories. But whenever you want, you can lift up the ring and use it as a stand for anything from watching videos or TikToks to using it as a selfie stand or close-up macro recording. The O-Stand 360 spin case spins like this with a four-zone spring-loaded mechanical axis allowing your phone to stand stably in four fixed positions, which makes it super comfortable comfy to use as a finger grip, while the 360 rotatable case allows the stand to rotate more freely in various angles 
and positions so you can do things like hang your phone on your laptop screen to use it as a webcam. And you can pick up one of these Taurus O-Stand 360 cases using the link in the description below. Apple added the action button on the 15 Pro models and so far, it's been a bit of a back and forth for me over the past six months. First of all, the idea is really cool. A fully customizable button to do whatever you want it to do, including shortcut automations, which makes it by far the best implementation out of any other phone's special button. But for the first couple of months, I found myself not really using it at all because I set it to open my camera, which I found that I could more easily do just from the lock screen. But now, six months later, I've set it to open my Tesla app, and it's honestly been amazing because I can open it up from the lock screen directly with it using Face ID to unlock and open it so I can turn on the AC just with one button like that. And I can only imagine it'll improve over time, especially if Apple finds a way to implement AI features into the action button somehow. But as for right now, it's honestly a cool little bonus to have, and I wouldn't be too sad if it magically disappeared, so it's definitely not a legendary feature. Now the new 5X Tetra Prism camera, that right there is an instant legendary feature. Yes, this new camera has led to the most excitement I've experienced in any camera update over the last few years. Not only is it finally a proper 5X zoom lens that digitally zooms up to 25X if you really need to, but there are a couple of really cool advantages that stem directly from the Tetra Prism lens design compared to a traditional periscope zoom lens like many other smartphones have. First of all, this design allows Apple to stabilize the 5X camera on the X, Y, and Z axes, which is the best stabilization you can get, which is extremely important for zoom shots because the further you zoom, the more you notice camera shake, which can lead to blurry zoom photos, and Apple solved this issue in the best way possible. You can see just how impressive the 5X video stabilization is thanks to this Tetra Prism design, which which is perfect for use cases like recording video at Monster Jam or even giving a unique look and angle for some of the sponsored content that we filmed over the last six months. But my personal favorite part about the 5X camera is that you can use it for just about the most beautiful and DSLR styled portrait photos that you can take on a smartphone, giving it an epic look thanks to its 120 millimeter focal length equivalent combined with smart HDR that really makes sunset colors pop. But there's actually a secret for why this looks so good, and it all comes back to the Tetra Prism lens design, which gives it a very impressive aperture of f2.8 compared to Samsung's previous 10X periscope with an f4.9 aperture, with a lower number representing a larger opening in the lens that light goes through to hit the camera sensor. And the larger the opening, the less noise you get in low light photos because the camera doesn't have to compensate for the darkness by turning up the exposure, which in turn introduces noise. That is literally the only reason why Samsung switched from a 10X to a 5X periscope, which greatly improved the aperture to f3.4, but it's still not as good as Apple's f2.8, which I'd say is only achievable thanks to the unique Tetra Prism lens design, allowing enough light for portrait mode processing to give you a great looking portrait photo. So those are the two legendary features this time around, USB-C and the new 5X camera. And other than that, everything else like titanium is pretty cool, but not a huge deal. Now as for the leaks for the iPhone 16 Pro Max, I think it's gonna be a really good S year update with upgrades like the larger display size, Wi-Fi 7, newer battery tech, a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, and more. But in terms of legendary features, I'm really only seeing two candidates so far, with the first being the A18 Pro chip, which I think will finally get a huge boost in 
performance, enabling new AI features, which I'm really excited for. And the second feature is gonna be the new capture button, which will mimic the features of a shutter button like you see on pro cameras, like pressing halfway down to lock the focus before snapping a photo, as well as whatever else Apple can think of. And I think that will be legendary if Apple can pull it off in the right way. But if you don't care enough about those two features to wait another six months, I'd say that I've been very happy with the iPhone 15 Pro Max and can definitely recommend an upgrade for many folks out there. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did, go ahead and click that button above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Definitely check out one of those two right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.